Crim 2 News 10 at 10 begins now with Mark Hanrahan and Jeremy Legoo. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Crem 2 News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. We start tonight with an update on the Democratic ticket for president. Kamala Harris officially secured the party nomination within the last hour. Delegates with the Democratic National Convention ended five days of online balloting just before midnight Eastern time to nominate Harris. She is now the first woman of color to lead a major party ticket. Meantime, we are less than 24 hours out from the Washington primary election. Voters are choosing a new governor, senator, and several state reps. In our effort to bring you more to every story, we spoke with a local political science professor for some voter insight. Open elections are very tend to be very competitive and uh, lead to the possibility that maybe there will, there will be uh, a change in party representation. Here is full interview coming up in less than 10 minutes. Washington State Commissioner of Public Lands Hillary Franz visited Spokane today to check out the site of the Upper Cemetery fire by Government Way. That fire torched several acres on the edge of Spokane, prompting level two evacuations. But as Krem 2's Cody Proctor found out while touring behind the fire lines with the commissioner, it could have been much worse. Fire season has been already incredibly busy for firefighters across the state, especially in eastern Washington. But on Monday, DNR Commissioner Hillary Franz made a trip to Spokane County to check out an area that showed that doing some work ahead of time can really make a difference. When it comes to fire, time is everything. But when fighting a fire that only needs seconds to destroy, how do you get more time? According to Commissioner of Public Lands Hillary Franz with the Washington State Department of Natural Resources, they can get more time by being proactive. Because the sooner that we can make our forests and landscapes more resilient to fire, the more we can reduce these catastrophic fires that could have been this one. The fire she's talking about is last month's Upper Cemetery fire. That fire torched more than 40 acres on the edge of Spokane and threatened several homes and a nearby school. It also burned in an area that's part of the West Palisades fuel reduction project. Fire crews worked on the area once in 2013 and then again this year, pruning several acres of trees of their lower limbs and reducing the fuel on the ground. The difference between the treated area and the untreated section of the forest next to it proved to be staggering. And then behind you over here, according you to Spokane Fire Department's Nick Jeffries. This section of the fire that was burning was the heaviest, most intense. We just had a lot more success in the area that was treated, and that's why this is such an exciting little piece, because this section that was burnt was actually less, less risk for everybody. DNR says they've treated almost 800,000 acres of forest across central and eastern Washington since 2017, with the ultimate goal of treating 1.25 million acres across the state. According to fire officials, this particular project's finished about 430 acres in the Spokane area. Spokane Fire hopes to treat another 500 to 1,000 acres over the next year. But for now, fire officials hope to use this fire as a chance to learn more. Every time there's a fire that hits an area, we've done a forest health treatment, we go back into that landscape to say, did we get it right? What are the lessons to be learned that we can as we continue to learn about forest health? In Spokane, Cody Proctor. And do you think we got it right? Uh, we're going to go walk this and we're going to find out. Crem 2 News. All right, now to our forecast, a Krem 2 weather impact alert issued earlier today has expired, but as Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Legu tells us, there's still a chance we'll see some thunderstorms into tomorrow. Jeremy? Yeah, Mark, most of that activity expected in the southern panhandle. For us, we're back to clear and dry, but get this. With the dew point of 55, we're trapping some of that heat. 83 degrees at 10.04 p.m. It is that kind of warm out there. And across much of the inland northwest, those temperatures are staying quite warm. 73 in Deer Park, 71 in Coeur d'Alene, 72 up in Sandpoint, and still in the upper 80s out in Moses Lake. We will cool down, but don't expect that cool down to arrive until after midnight. Then those temperatures will fall and we get down into the mid 60s. And tomorrow that sun warms us right back up on the heels of today's storms. Those storms working their way out. Little bit of activity trying to form down to the south, but most of that is staying out of the region. It looks like there is a possibility of a stray storm tomorrow down south and that is it. Otherwise it's sunny 92. 90 on Wednesday, 89 on Thursday, and each day we should get a little bit cooler overnight, down near 60.
All right, sounds good, Jeremy. We'll check back in with you later in the show. Over the weekend, Medical Lake's mayor shut down rumors that a former women's prison in Medical Lake would be bought by the city of Spokane and turned into a homeless shelter. In our effort to bring you more to every story, we spoke with council member Jonathan Bingle to find out what fueled those rumors. Turns out he pitched two ideas last week for repurposing the Pine Lodge Correction Center. One, to turn it into a site for low-level offenders or to use it as a homeless resource center. But Bingle said he considered the ideas dead after talking with the mayor of Medical Lake. Mayor Cooper expressed to me pretty quickly, Jonathan, this facility is in disrepair. It would not be good. Uh, this is not a good use for this facility or for the city of Medical Lake. And so for me, that idea really died there after I talked to uh, Terry. But I brought it up in the Homeless Coalition meeting to uh, demonstrate the efforts that my office is taking to find a facility that would be uh, good for us in the region. We do know that Spokane's mayor toured Pine Lodge last week to see if it would meet public safety needs in the region. Mayor Lisa Brown was unavailable for an interview today, but her spokesperson said it was a fact-finding mission to see if it could be used as additional jail space. But she says it was apparent the building is just not usable. And now to our night beat with a quick look at today's top stories. The Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife is now in emergency response mode after the state's first case of chronic wasting disease was detected last week. The infected deer was found dead in Fairwood in North Spokane County. The department's plan to mainly rely on hunters and salvagers to submit samples so they can figure out how widespread the disease may be. I would also anticipate there being some requirements for providing samples. What we don't you know, understand right yet or haven't made decisions around at this point is you know, in what geographic area? Is it the immediate response area? Is it a GMU? Is it a conglomerate of GMUs. The department has a meeting later this week to determine next steps in trying to stop the spread of the disease. Charges have been dropped against the 19 year old accused of intentionally leaving skid marks on the downtown Spokane Pride mural. Ruslan Turco was one of three people arrested after that Pride mural was defaced with lime scooters. He was charged with first degree malicious mischief. This comes just a few months after a Washington state law was expanded to include defacing public property, not just private property, in hate crime charges. Meantime, we learned today Top Golf may be coming to Liberty Lake. The popular driving range submitted a code amendment request to the Liberty Lake Planning Commission. They are looking at a site on East Country Vista Drive for the new location. The company says the $25 million facility would create an estimated 250 jobs and bring in 250,000 visitors per year. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just head to our website. That's Krem.com. New tonight, Washington Senator Maria Cantwell and Congresswoman Pramia Jayapal are asking a judge to temporarily stop the planned merger between Kroger's and Albertsons. A federal district court in Oregon is considering the request from the Federal Trade Commission. The agency argues the $20 billion merger would hurt both consumers and workers. Kroger and Albertsons have already agreed to put the merger on hold while a judge considers a lawsuit filed by Colorado's attorney general. We are expecting to learn more soon about a Boeing 737 MAX 9 that had that door plug blowout over Portland back in January. Tomorrow, the NTSB will kick off 20 hours of public hearings. Here is the plane parts in question. According to the agenda, it will start with addressing the lack of paperwork filed by Boeing that may have contributed to the incident. The FBI says there could be criminal charges related to the failures that led up to that that day. The closing bell marked another major downturn on Wall Street today. The Dow Jones fell more than 1,000 points and the Nasdaq dropped significantly after investors dumped tech stocks. CBS business analysts point to Friday's U.S. jobs report that showed hiring slowed more than expected and there are signs Americans are spending less. Put those two together and we say, okay, the economy is slowing down. We don't see a recession today, but the fear is that this could change pretty dramatically Despite the numbers, experts say the average person does not need to panic. They are expecting a significant cut to interest rates next month to help boost the economy. And that was your Krem 2 News 10 at 10, where you get more news in less time.